It's back to ACC action for the Clemson Tigers and Virginia Tech Hokies here at Doug Kingsmore Stadium, game one of a weekend series. Hi, friends, and welcome in with Ron Smith, Pete Hannity with you. Dare we say it is a crucial weekend series for a Tigers team that's off to a 1-5 and five start in conference play. Hitting with runners in scoring position has been a big issue with the bats, and establishing uh, some decent starting pitching has also been something to point at during the weekend. The two big keys for the, for the Tigers, as you mentioned, uh, uh, really important for them to swing the bat a little bit better with guys on base, extend their starting pitching. Their uh, bullpen has been outstanding, really, really good, and they need to get that pitching going a little bit better uh, as far as their starting pitching goes. That pitching will try to contain a lefty-oriented Virginia Tech lineup led by T.J. Rumfield, their first baseman who transferred in from Texas Tech. Well, Rumfield is a very aggressive hitter, as are all of the Hokies, hitting 393. He's produced 10 RBIs, hit three home runs, uh, seven walks, and only three strikeouts. Really uh, does a nice job of plate discipline. He is among the ACC hit leaders. Lineup for a Hokies team hitting 271, which is sixth in the conference. Carson Jones, the left fielder, Tanner Schobel, followed by Gavin Cross, Rumfield, Swisher, and Hurley in the middle. Madden, Hunter, and Genther, the shortstop, rounded out. Tigers, Meredith, Teodosio, and Brewer left to right in the outfield. Hawkins, Parker, Henderson, Grice in the infield. Jonathan French again behind the plate. And a changeup for the Tigers. A Friday night starter, not named Davis Sharp. Mac Anglin getting his first start of the season. Yeah, big opportunity for Mac. He's done a great job out of the bullpen for the Tigers, 92-95 curveball slider guy that uh, he's going to have to throw that for strikes because as we mentioned earlier, Virginia Tech very, very aggressive on the fastball. Monty Lee says Anglin has Friday night stuff. That's why they decided to go in his direction. His longest outing of the year came Sunday in Chapel Hill. He went three and two-thirds innings. That wasn't designed to stretch him out for tonight. It was simply because they were trying to win that game. Well, they're still searching for a you know, for a pitching rotation, and they've had some injuries, and uh, as I mentioned, a great opportunity for Mac Anglin tonight. Jones has played some right field for the Hokies, but their left fielder tonight went 0 for 4 in a midweek loss against UNCG in Anglin's first pitch of his first start of 2021. And we are underway. Anglin has pushed up around 97 miles an hour with his fastball. Native of Marengo, Ohio, went to Highland High School. Redshirt freshman at 6'4", 220. Oh, prototypical body for a pitcher. Ooh, there's that slider. Good looking pitch. And, that, and that's really important for him because I don't care how hard you throw it, college hitters are going to catch up to fastballs if you can't put something off speed over the plate. Jones goes the other way. The redshirt freshman out of Glen Allen, Virginia, leadoff base runner for the Hokies in this game. A Virginia Tech team that comes in at 9-6 and six overall, 5-4 and four in the conference. But, again, they have an aggressive, really, mindset at the plate, and they'll spray the ball, too. Well, in that two-strike approach, just a great job by Jones to take another off-speed pitch, a slider. Might have gotten too much of the plate, and he just served it into left field. Tanner Schobel, second baseman, 283 on the season. He's a true freshman from Williamsburg. Told you they're 5-4 and four in the ACC, but they have had a brutal schedule to start the season and ripped into left. First two runners reach on singles to left field for the Hokies, who have something going here in their half of the first. Yeah, high fastball at 97, but again, uh, you've got to locate a little bit better. That ball was up around the waist and uh, able to get that thing into left field. Two hits in a row for the Hokies. Here's Gavin Cross, freshman left fielder. 385 on the season. That's not too far behind their leader, Rumfield, who we just talked about. As yet to Homer, has driven in three. And Anglin coming off speed, 83 miles an hour, to deliver a first pitch strike. Yeah, a, a slider, and you can, you know, maybe pitch backwards a little bit. They're, they're jumping on that fastball and might want to pitch backwards. As you see, the wind blowing out. 
Get up around 8 to 10 miles an hour tonight, we're told. Another slider. But the last thing you want to do is pitch with runners on base. Both starters tonight, Anglin and also Peyton Alford, the lefty for Virginia Tech, are swing and miss guys. And that's the kind of pitcher you want to have on the hill tonight. Into right field. It's going to get down. Runner at second had to hold, so Jones will pull into third. And three straight singles to start this game for the Hokies for Rumfield, their cleanup hitter. Boy, not the situation <laughs> that you want to start with. We'll see if see if Anglin can can work his way out of this. You know, bases loaded, nobody out. You got your best Virginia Tech hitter up. You know, as a as a coach, as Monty Lee's looking out there, is thinking, well, if we could just hold them to maybe one run at this point, two runs, one run, you'd pr he'd probably trade that right now. You'd love to get a strikeout, but Rumfield, best on their team. He struck out just three times this season. He's got a 607 slugging percentage. And he looks at ball one just off the edge. Anglin, three starts a year ago so far this season. 3.09 ERA. And you like the strikeout. 17 of them in 11 yeah. and two-thirds. And only four walks. I mean, he's he's thrown strikes, and he's got good stuff. But sometimes, you know, you throw strikes, it's got to be it's, the strikes are down the middle. You've got to work the edges. 1-0. And he falls behind 2-0. Rumfield, we told you, transferred from Texas Tech. He's from Temple, Texas. He's grounded into one double play so far in their first 15 games. And the count goes two and one. Well, I can guarantee the Tigers would, guarantee, would uh, trade a double play for a run right here. Lead off single by Jones, a bit of a floater into left, but good contact by Schobel on his hard line drive into left field and then cross on the Shot to right that loaded him up. And the count evens at two and two. And there's your double play ball, a slider down and in. And you can see the infield for Clemson uh, is back. I mean, even Grice at first base is, is back. If there's a ground ball hit to him, he's going to take, you know, try to get the double play, not going to try to force the runner at home. Big pitch here in the early portion of this game. And the count goes full. Rumfield, seven free passes so far this year. Well, look, he's, you've seen he's, he's shortened up on that bat a little bit. He just wants to put it in play. Infield fly, so it'll be out number one. And... Best that that be let go anyway by Briar Hawkins. But knowing the situation, I think he would have caught her, maybe even deferred to Parker, the shortstop. Right. It was, they it was had Parker's to ball. And that wind, but that wind just took it further and further away from Hawkins. It's blowing out towards right center field, and he had to go a long way and just didn't get a real good bead on it. But it didn't hurt. So out number one, a big out number one. Cade Swisher, the lefty hitting DH. Backup infielder for them out of Chesterfield, Virginia, just outside of Richmond. They fell in their Tuesday game to UNCG, but he was two for three with a double and a run batted in. A solid 286 batting average and... Good pitch. Anglin gets ahead in the count 0 2. That was more of a cutter than a slider. And a little harder and, and a good looking pitch, but really important for the Hokies. Swisher's got to produce because if he doesn't produce, people can pitch around Rumfeld. And Anglin, known for throwing a hard curve and yeah. a hard slider, yeah. not necessarily as off speed as, as some others tend to be. Count goes 1 and 2. Good job by French to reach out and make sure that didn't get by him. And the one-two. 
Off speed, called, strike three. Another good slider. Anglin stepping up. Just a good looking pitch on the outside part of the plate. French does a nice job of letting it get deep. So it looks really looks good to the umpire. Jack Hurley, the freshman center fielder. 224 batter, and he struck out 19 times. That leads their team in a category you certainly don't want to be first in. <laughs> I owned that category as a player. <laughs> <laughs> Tigers pitching stranded six Georgia State runners in the win earlier this week. Anglin falling behind Hurley here, 2-0. Oh. Yeah, two, two early sliders. He's going you know, to come with that fastball. Three straight singles to lead things off by Jones, Schobel, and Cross, but an infield fly pop out, a strikeout, and now and getting away from French, but not far enough, but Anglin behind, 3-0. and oh. You know, he's worked so hard to get himself out of this inning, and that was fortunate. I believe that hit the umpire. Yeah, that, that hit the home plate umpire, Jeff Doy, and that was a big break for the Tigers. But he's worked so hard, you, you wonder if he's almost let down a little bit after being in such a jam. 3-0 pitch, taking all the way, 3-1. and one. Runners will be off on contact. England 3-1, ball four. Might have actually got a piece of Hurley in the first run of the game as Jones comes across. Give Hurley the RBI. That's his ninth of the season. And now bases remain loaded. Two men out. Here's the third baseman, Kevin Matt. You know, again, he pitched so well against Rumfield and Swisher and then maybe let just let down a little bit, Pete. Kind of thinking that he was out of this jam. Madden faced the Tigers a couple of years ago. Hit him well. Was four of nine with a couple of runs scored in the 2019 series. Over three in their last game against UNCG. And we noticed him during batting practice going through at least one rep using a wooden yep. bat. Mm -hmm. You could just, you could obviously see it, but the, it just sounded so different than the normal bats they use. Didn't mean to, and it'll go foul. He asked their coach about their aggressive approach at the plate. And John Sheff says, you know, I, I let my guys be my guys and trust them to make the right decision when they're in there. Not necessarily that they emphasize anything as an organization in terms of working counts and that kind of thing. Good off-speed pitch by Anglin to get ahead one and two. That that slider had some bite. Look at that. Good job by French framing. Good. Solid. Stuck it. Now that was one he had to go out and get because it was breaking off the plate. One, two. Check. Did he? He did. French simply stepping on home plate. And Anglin able to work out a bases loaded, no one out, allowing just one run in the Hokies' half of the first inning. Two of the outs recorded strikeouts. Tigers coming up. Tigers need to get things going in a lot of ways, including as a team hitting 233. Here's a lineup that Monty Lee runs out there. Kier Meredith, Dylan Brewer, James Parker, Grice Hackenberg, and French Teodosio Hawkins, and Elijah Henderson for the Tigers head coach in season number six going against the Hokies team that has Jones, Hurley, and Cross from left to right in the outfield. Madden, Genther, Schobel, and Rumfield in the infield. Hunter behind the plate. 
And a lefty on the mound who's seen the Tigers before, Peyton Alford, a couple of years ago, no decision when he went against Clemson in 2019. Inning in a third, three hits and four runs allowed. Now, this guy is uh, he's a veteran and, uh, you know, a 89-92 guy, but uh, elevates his fastball, and that's going to be a key for the Tigers tonight. They're going to have to lay off that fastball that's just above the belt. If they start fishing for that, then uh, Alford can have a, a lot of success. He also has a good breaking ball, but uh, 25 strikeouts already this year in just 14 inning pitch, pit, uh, innings pitched and uh, only seven walks. So he's been very effective for the Hokies. Kier Meredith one for 12 in his career. Or I'm I take that back. He did not play in the series a couple of years ago against the Hokies as he has just been riddled with injuries since coming to the Tigers from the Winston-Salem area. Tries to lead off with a bunt base hit. He'll reach on the throwing air, and Meredith will head to second. Tigers a leadoff man in scoring position. Really good. Really good bunt, and I, I really like that play, Pete, because you've got a lefty facing a lefty, and so you can see Alford kind of falling off towards third base, and uh, he might have been safe even if the throw were not errant. But uh, great start for the Tigers, and and again I like Meredith's play of, of just getting that ball in play and get him moving around a little bit. Now we'll see if the Tigers can can move him over, get him to third with less than two outs. Dylan Brewer hitting 261, took the collar the other night 0 for 4 against Georgia State. First pitch swinging, and you see that Alford likes to stay high in the zone. Doesn't necessarily burn you with a mid-90s fastball, but he's effective pitching up there. Well, there's that. that's the very pitch we talked about that Tigers are going to have to lay off that high fastball. And, and Brewer, a, just a, you know, a true freshman, it's hard. Looks at ball one. Clemson going for a seven straight win in the series against Virginia Tech in a 48th all time. 47 24 and 2, the series record. You know, you look at Alford's mechanics, he, he, he kind of short arms the ball. So it gets on you pretty quickly. He may not be, th you know, again, throwing it up there 95, but uh, it's kind of a short arm, almost like a catcher's delivery. You look Meredith back to second. And we talked about at the top of the telecast, a big issue for this team, the batting average with runners in scoring position. That will tell a big story as to why Clemson comes into this game averaging fewer than five runs per contest. And Brewer ahead in the count, two and one. And Monty Lee said, we're not even talking about it. It's not anything I'm going to try to coach them through. They know what they're supposed to do, and they've, they've tried to he says with all the social media today and everyone in their ear, the last thing they need to hear is their head coach adding more pressure to them in that regard. And gets away and on to third will go Meredith. I'm not so sure that Hunter knew where the ball was for a couple of seconds. And now a man on third. No one out and a 3-1 count on Brewer. And now you just got to put the ball in play. But back to, back to Monty Lee. Uh, yeah. He's been around things here. You see a you know, fastball down in the dirt, and Hunter did a pretty good job, but really didn't smother that, that ball the way you'd like to see your catcher. And uh, But, you know, Coach Lee's been around a while, and, and, and you're trying to get your team to play a little bit better every day. Wins are going to happen. They're going to come. There's that high fastball. And Brewer didn't mean to, but foul tips it into the glove. Now you want to drive the you want to drive the runner in, but if, boy, if you expand the strike zone that much, it makes it really tough. Brewer best on the team in walks, but second worst on the team in strikeouts. And he takes ball four, his team leading 14th free pass of the season, first and third, no one out here in the bottom half of inning number one. Brings up James Parker, the most consistent of the Tiger batters so far this season. Leads the team with that 351 batting average. You see the OPS. And a little bit of pop and a guy that Monty Lee says has fulfilled the expectations and had he not had some injury issues in the shortened 2020 season, they think that 
he would have been their best hitter for the month and a half they played last year. Now you got your shortstop hitting uh, hitting in three hole. That tells you something about his ability. One for three with a double against Virginia Tech in the 2019 series. Two for five in the one against Georgia State on Tuesday night. And an opportunity to get this game evened up with one swing of the bat right here. Or even better than that. And it goes high three and oh. And coming to this game, what jumped off the sheet at you for Peyton Alford, the 25 strikeout. Yes. 14 innings and... You look at the base on balls, just seven, but he's already walked one here in the bottom of the first. Going to get a visit from his pitching coach, Scott Fecto. It appears to me that he is overthrowing a little bit. I mean, again, I mentioned that that short arm action that he has, and that's one of the reasons I think it's a little bit uh, hard for pitcher or for hitters to to pick him up. And uh, but but. Again, if the Tigers can lay off that pitch just above the belt, they're going to have a lot more success. Parker would love to change the trend with a man in scoring position. Kier Meredith down at third base. Dylan Brewer, the runner at first. Well, Tiger and, team. And you know, this is, hitting is contagious, and hitting with men on base is contagious. And, and uh, so it's, a, it's an opportunity here. 3 0 the count. Alford a week ago against Florida State ended up with a no decision, went five and two thirds, allowed three hits and an earned run, and struck out 10 in that outing. He doesn't look as sharp here at this point, obviously. 3 0. I really like the Meredith play, got him off the mound. Got, got uh, offered off the mound right away. Got him moving around. He threw the ball away. Uh, just kind of got his juices flowing a little bit and, and it really hasn't pitched as sharply as, as he's capable of. Back-to-back -back walks. The Tigers have him loaded with no one out in their half of the first inning. That was close on the outside corner, but it was outside. Might have gotten the call on the 3-0 pitch, so yeah. <laughs> everything tends to even out in the game. Meredith Brewer and Parker, the base runners for the Tigers. Slugging freshman Caden Grice. Five home runs on the year. Yeah, this young man has really come in and done a nice job. A true freshman, Riverside High School in Greenville. And 316, whew, 11 RBIs on the team. Leaders in that category as well. Yes, lefty on lefty. Left field. Over is Jones, and he can't handle it. It lands in fair territory. Runners advance the base. Meredith comes home with a tying run. The wind had died down. And some issues afield so far for this Virginia Tech team. Yep. Well, Jones, I think, got a pretty good jump on that, but the ball was not hit real well. It landed maybe two feet fair down the left field line. And as you can see, he's, I mean, he really has no chance to catch that ball. Well, I thought he was surely going to get closer than that, but it'll fall in for an RBI single for Caden Grice, 12th run batted into the season. Base is still full, no one out. Adam Hackenberg, second game back from an injury. Uh, getting him back is going to help the Tigers not only at the at the plate, but as a hitter, but also behind the plate. The French does a really nice job, but boy, it's hard to catch every game. Hackenberg 0 for 1 in his career against the Hokies. Big opportunity here to bring home his first RBI or more on the season. You know, the Tigers' injuries have been fairly significant with Hackenberg out and just now starting to come back. Askew's been out, and, and Sam Hall been out with that broken thumb. So uh, maybe if you can get these guys back, get a couple of, uh, you know, get a couple of wins, get some confidence going, get this thing turned around. 
Alford ahead. 0-2. Oh Off speed, 1-2. and two. And the return of Kier Meredith from the injury list is huge for a lot of reasons. Hometown of Palmyra, Virginia. Tigers have a guy in their athletic program from Palmyra, Virginia, who's got a big game coming up tonight at 9.20, Amir Sims. So he and Hackenberg go back a ways. 1-2 pitch. That's a fair ball. Shoveling for the out at home, and that's out number one. Or was it foul? I couldn't tell by the indication from Jeff Doy, the home plate umpire. He would have held both hands up if it were a foul ball. Monty Lee is now going out to get a explanation. Let's see. Nope. No, that's not a foul ball. It did not hit his foot. Same principles if the ball were dribbled up the line in foul territory, but rolled back in fair right. play before getting to the bag. It's right. a fair ball, and in it, that case. Now, had, it hit, had it hit his foot, of course, it would be sure. a, a foul ball. But it, it, it looked like it, but uh, that very clearly on the replay showed that uh, it did not hit his foot. And there's that. there was that high fastball that Alford does a good job, and he was able, actually able to get a little bit in on Hackenberg. He wasn't able to get his bat head out front there. Now the explanation being given by Jeff Doy to Monty Lee and telling him they didn't even go to the videotape, but we had the benefit of seeing it. Our four-man crew tonight. Doy behind the plate. And we'll take another look. And Hackenberg did not, did not react like it, like it had hit his foot. True. Jonathan French ran into one the other night. Tiger catcher on the season now with four home runs, second on the team behind Grice, taking ball one. He'll be looking high fastball. The wind is once again blowing out to right field as we showed you earlier. Of course, French was not available a year ago due to a injury. So we didn't see any action in 2020 with a leg issue. 1-0 pitch. Count goes 1-1. One and one. The pitch count now swelling in this opening inning for Alford as a Friday night starter. They not only like his stuff, but they count on him to try to at least get him into the sixth, maybe the seventh inning and right. keep their bullpen intact for the rest of the weekend. And that's what I was going to say. It doesn't just affect this evening's games, but the rest of the series. Chop to third. Madden only played a first catcher running and Rumfield Looked like he'd taken his foot off the bag. Monty Lee immediately out of the dugout. He did a nice job to keep it in front of him. Second run of the game is going to score for the Tigers, but they may still have him full with only one out if they go to the videotape on this one, and it turns out like we think. Mighty close. close. Honestly, a lot closer than I thought. I thought it was obvious that he pulled his foot off the bag. Well, I think he was fumbling the ball. when the runner touched first base. They're going to go take a look, and I think that's what they're going to say, that, that uh, he did not have control of the ball. Rumfield did not have control of the baseball when French crossed first base. You see him fumble or bobble it just slightly. I'm not sure his foot is on the bag or not. It's hard to tell from that angle. For now, well, French will have his 11th run batted into the season. See, it may be not, one of those deals where it's too close to overturn based on the out call being made. But look, he does not have control of the baseball. Yeah, it does well, not appear. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. Certainly again, not in his glove. From that angle, his glove is hiding if he yeah. had it snug up against his leg as the foot had yet to come down to the bag. That's probably the only way they can get this overturned if they... Oh, boy, it's hard to tell with that uh, foot, too. That's that's a tough angle to tell with that it is. foot being on the base. It really is. You, you really, it, he may have it stuck between the glove and his leg yeah. before French's foot lands. And again, had safe been the call, it would be hard to overturn it. 
And that's exactly since right. out is the call, they may just not have enough video evidence because they'll never know glove ball leg in that situation relative to when the foot came down in the bag. That could be the issue. In any case, Tigers will have a 2-1 lead. But will it be second and third and two outs or bases loaded and one out? And now they will overturn the call and safe is the ruling. So that's an infield hit to go along with an RBI for French. Good use of replay right there. And the uh, Virginia Tech coaches uh, dismayed, of course. But I think they got it right. Certainly an uh, opportunity the Tigers did not want to see loss, so it remains one out. Bryce Teodosio, who had a nice game against Georgia State in the Tuesday night win with his Second home run of the season and an important catch in the sixth inning with the potential tying run on third and two outs. And he went into the gap and halfway up nice the hill play. made a dive and grab. And that kept it a one-run Clemson advantage. And the Tigers went on to the victory from there. Alford started Teodosio off with a really nice changeup. Boy, he was looking fastball. One and one the count. And, boy, Alford has not been able to get out in front of as many batters as he right. would like to here in the first. That's been part of his struggles. Plus, he set the table for himself when his Boy, throw to first. Two walks in a row. and, and, and Two walks in the throwing that error. That was right after making the throwing error. Yep. No change up. Way out in front that time, Teodosio, and he falls behind one and two. Now here's one of those situations where Teodosio is really oh, good change up. Not great location, but boy, you know, good arm action. He's got to let the ball get a little deeper here. Another changeup. The strikeout of the game. And the 26 on the season for Alford and for Teodosio. He goes down on strikes for a 14th time here in 2021. Oh, that's really good arm action. See that ball? That arm looks like he's thrown it at about 95, and it's coming out at 80. Yeah, that's it's hard to sit back on that, and you know it's one of those things where with two strikes and a guy on third and less than two outs, boy, you got to shorten up, let the ball get deep. Hard, hard thing to do. Tigers hope Briar Hawkins can continue his good work against Virginia Tech pitching. He was six of 11 with four batted in two years ago against the Hokies. Tigers got a sweep in that series in Blacksburg and swept Virginia Tech here at Doug Kingsmore Stadium in 2017. Thus the six-game winning streak against Virginia Tech, but change up a little bit. Out in front for a second Tiger batter on that change up as Hawkins falls behind at the count 0-2. He's going to throw that fastball up. See if... Hawkins can lay off. Left center field. Long run for Hurley. And tried to make the diving grab. It's off the wall. It'll score three. Hawkins trucking for third. And he's in with a three-run triple. Well, Alford went to that changeup again. I thought he would come with that high heat. But uh, he, he threw a high changeup. You can see that grip, that changeup grip. And he got it up. Hawkins able to put it out there into the left center field gap. Hurley una unable to run it down, and with, with two outs, the Tigers are running and three runs score easily. Thanks at a 5-1 game. First three batted in in 2021 for Briar Hawkins, the Tiger third baseman, sophomore from just outside of Atlanta. Ninth man in the order, Elijah Henderson tries to keep it going. And what well, we talked about, the runners in scoring position issue. And yep. so far, no trouble at all here in the home first. Big two-out hit. Center fielder converging. Second baseman Schobel back. A little bit of an adventure with the wind blowing straight at him. For out number three, Tigers get five on three hits. A 5-1 lead after one.
John Sheff sees his team down by four. He's done a nice job with Virginia Tech and taking over back in 2018. His second tour in the ACC. His first two seasons guiding Maryland. The Terrapins were an ACC team. Then they went on to the Big Ten. He has since come back to the conference. He also has a prior head coaching stop at Marist in Poughkeepsie, New York. And he's one of two head coaches in the Atlantic Coast Conference who hails from the Hudson River Valley town of Middletown, New York. Mike Gambino at Boston College, also from that hometown. In fact, Chef recruited Gambino when he was a high school player in their respective hometowns. And we were impressed with the fact that, well, the head coach of the Hokies, John Chef, who's not necessarily uh, in his 30s, his mom is still a college uh, professor. So yes. that's impressive. Yes. Education runs through the family. Hokies trying to bounce back. They had bases loaded and no one out in the first inning and were able to come away with just one run as Mac Anglin getting his first start of the year did a nice job working out of trouble. Here's Cade Hunter, their left-handed hitting catcher, hitting just 200 on the season, but second on their team with three homers and the appeal, and it's a one and two count. Well, you know, you look at the, the, the first inning for both pitchers, and Anglin, despite you know, getting into trouble, you know, he gave up three base hits, he, you know, and, and you got to give the other team some credit. Called strike three. Third strikeout so far. Two. He's caught the batter looking. Oh, good, good slider here. Ooh, back, back door slider again. French let it get nice and deep. But, but to, again, to go back to the two first innings, Alford got himself in trouble. He had threw the ball away at first base, had two walks in a row. And then he had the, the blue pit down the left field line. And then, of course, the big the big hit that uh, by Hawkins that cleared the bases. But uh, he just he was not as sharp as was Anglin. Tiger staff hoping Anglin can get him one and a half or maybe two times through this Hokies order. And Monty Lee says Anglin has the kind of stuff to face Boy, that's a batting order a number of times. First time he's faced Genther, who looked lost on that pitch. Little squirter right side. Henderson on to first and quickly two up and two down here in the Hokies second. And boy, that's what you want from a pitcher. After, you know, you give up one in the first, and then your team scores five. You try to get a, have a really quick inning and get you know get back in there and get those bats going again. Uh, now we'll see. He got two quick outs. To see if he has the letdown. Jones singled to lead the game off and later scored. Bases loaded. And Center fielder Hurley reaching what I believe was ruled as a hit by pitch. I've got to double check that. It was either a ball four. Or I think it might have just grazed him based on the umpire's indication. Jones, a 385 hitter. One of the many freshmen, either true or redshirt, in their lineup. But keep in mind, they're redshirt freshmen. A lot of them saw significant game action a year ago and are right. still categorized as redshirt freshmen because of the NCAA waiver. But you look around this roster and you see a bunch of guys with freshmen next to their name in terms of their eligibility and academic lefty and yeah. lefty next to their name in terms of how they bat. They've right. Got and then, but academically, they are sophomores. Maybe junior. Rump, yeah. Rump, Rumpfeld's even a junior. So. Yeah. Even though he's listed as only a redshirt freshman for a guy who began his career at Texas Tech, their first baseman count goes full as Anglin would love to have a clean inning here after facing seven batters in the Hokies' half of the first. That was indeed a hit-by-pitch with the bases loaded on Hurley, and that's how he was able to get the only run so far across the plate for Virginia Tech. But well, you see Jones on that that last pitch. It was down and away, and on his first at-bat, it was a pitch that was down and away, and he laced it into left field. He was trying to do the same thing there. He's letting the ball get a little deeper with two strikes. Payoff pitch, swing and a miss. Two strikeouts in the inning, four so far through the first two. Mac Anglin, Monty Lee says he has Friday night stuff, and so far, he's showing it.
Kier Meredith taking ball one. As we welcome you back to Doug Kingsmore Stadium with Ron Smith, Pete Yannity with you. Count goes one and one on the Tigers left fielder who reached as he laid down a bunt to start the bottom of the first inning and advanced to second on a throwing error by the pitcher, Peyton Alford, who has struggled so far, allowing five Tiger runs in the first inning. Looped to center, Hurley. A little bit back to his left. Out number one. Big breaking ball by Alford. Tigers head coach Monty Lee trying to make it seven straight in the series against Virginia Tech. Skipper in his sixth season as the Tigers head coach. Looking to get things turned around, trying to keep things calm on the ship after a one and five start. They hope the win against Georgia State, which snapped a losing streak the other night, was part of the process. And we noted that the fact that they've gotten Keyshawn Askew, the lefty pitcher back off the injured list, is important. Davis Sharp was supposed to go tomorrow. He would normally be the Friday starter. A little number in front of the plate by Brewer. And Hunter, the strong throw to first for out number two. Well, Davis Sharp is out for the weekend. He is not available either as a pitcher or as a hitter due to an injury. And we'll take another look. That looked like a changeup. Brewer just out in front a little bit. Boy, Hunter did a nice job. He, he showed some, some cat-like quickness and a very strong throw. So the Tigers without Davis Sharp, that is a yeah. big issue. Anglin was going to get the call anyway. As of this afternoon, Monty Lee was counting on sending Sharp to the hill tomorrow as a Saturday starter, but obviously the Tigers hope it's only a one-weekend absence due to injury for Sharp. James Parker yeah. walked and later scored in the first inning. And that's double trouble because, uh, you know, Sharp obviously is a really good hitter as well. So that's a, that, that could be a big blow. But uh, it's an opportunity for other players to step up. Sharp, like to, so many of the Tiger batters here in the early going, has struggled. But the missed time this weekend certainly doesn't help his progress at the plate. Three up, three down for Alford in the second. Head to the third in a 5-1 game. Tanner Schobel stepping in. Jeff Doy behind the play tonight. Blake Felix at first. Dave Susi at second. And Tim Rosso at third. Our umpires for this series opener between the Tigers and Virginia Tech Hokies. Mac Anglin hoping to continue his good work so far. Allowing just one run in the first after the first three batters reached and then striking out two of the three Hokies that he faced in inning number two. He's gone, he's gone to the uh, breaking ball quite a bit. And, you know, and talking with Coach Lee, he felt like that was a key for Anglin to be successful. He was going to have to throw his breaking ball Schobel's two for two infield hit that time. Really nice job to go in the corner then climb the ladder by James Parker. Yeah. The throw was never going to get him in a leadoff single. Yeah, I really don't think that uh, he was going to be able to throw him out regardless, but really athletic play and a strong arm. Fourth hit against Anglin. Two of them by Schobel. Gavin Cross, the right fielder, has one of the hokey hits. He was left stranded at second base in the top half of the first. Cross out of Bristol, Tennessee. Didn't play the other night in their loss to UNCG. Leads them with a 769 slugging percentage, 6-3 and 210. He looks like a power hitter. Left field, Meredith. And it's out number one. TJ Rumfield retired on pop out to third on the infield fly rule in the opening inning. Big out after the three consecutive hits. Nothing else, it, it just settled down. Exactly. And you could just see Anglin settle down with right. that one out. He could start to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Still gave up a run in the inning, but 
was able to get out of the jam with a strikeout looking and a strikeout swinging of Madden, the third baseman, with the bases loaded. And, and emotionally for Virginia Tech, they leave them stranded after oh. having the bags full and nobody out and just one run to show for it. You know, as I said, with bases loaded, nobody out, uh, you know, uh, the defensive team is usually pretty happy if they only give up one or even two runs because it could explode. Hokies team that was aggressive on the base pass last year, not so much this season. I mean, you look at uh, Schobel just 0 for 1. Yep. Uh, they, they're just not stealing many bases. They're 10 of 21 as a team after they were 13th in the nation when play ceased last March. Right around a year ago on this weekend last March, College baseball had been shut down with the hope it might come back, and it, it was right around now, right around March 19th or 20th or so, that you realize the spring seasons in all of college athletics right. shut down. And, and in this part of South Carolina and around the state of the South Carolina and others, high school sports shut down shortly thereafter. Just enough to get out there, but not enough for Meredith to run it down. First and second now with one away. And Rumfield now one for two. And that's why Rumfield is one of the best hitters in the ACC. You saw him sit back on that changeup or slider that uh, Anglin threw and just served it out into left field. Did not try to do too much with it. Cade Swisher, the DH, off that big game against UNCG when he was two for three with a run batted in on Tuesday night but caught looking in the first, a very big strikeout that followed the Rumfield pop-up. Yeah. You saw Anglin, kind of, he kind of ran away from that one with his mechanics. That's why he left it up, up and away. Didn't drive right down that line towards home plate. Swisher six batted in on the season. Much better. Count evens at one and one. Best we can tell, no relation to the former Yankees first baseman Nick or the <laughs> former journeyman catcher from the 70s and early 80s, Steve. Well, that's that's pretty good. Coming going back to Steve Swisher. Wow. Played at the same school where Mike Schmidt played his college baseball. French oh, again doing a good job keeping it in front. Two and one the count. Jonathan French for a big guy. I really like the agility we've seen. Well, I think him he got crossed up there, too. I don't know if you looked at that replay, but uh, I think he got crossed up. With that man on second base, it's not surprising. But uh, yeah, you're right. He is agile. Does a nice job receiving. He's really needed to grow into the role that he's had this year behind the plate due to some injury issues at that position and right. so forth. And Jonathan French. Batting average will, will get there. He's got the power. He's shown that. He's an important part of the middle of the lineup. And, boy, defensively with a pitching staff that's trying to find its way, you really value a catcher oh. who can handle a staff. And I think he's shown that here in the early going. 2-2 the count on Swisher. Oh, Anglin wanted the call. French held it there for an extra second, but the count goes full. Now that ball did not have the bite. That slider did not have the bite that we've seen earlier from Anglin. Anglin out of the Buckeye State of Ohio. He'll do it again with another 3-2 pitch. Hokies and Tigers playing in baseball here and each respective baseball team with interest toward basketball while Virginia Tech was having their pregame meal just down the road to their hotel here in Clemson. They were watching the Hokies men eventually lose a tough overtime NCAA tourney game against Florida. Good ball game. Yeah, really yeah, I, good game. It, you know, Mike Young, the former Wofford coach, I, did, I think he's one of the best coaches around. I, his team's always played hard when he was at Wofford and, and certainly at Virginia Tech as well and uh, played good defense just a very very good basketball coach 
Virginia Tech's past two NCAA tourney games, a one-point loss against Duke down in Columbia in 2019, and then today's overtime loss. Nice diving stop. Henderson, if nothing else, he prevents the runner at second from coming around, but once again, the Hokies, for the second time in three innings, have them loaded with less than two outs. You're right. Henderson with a nice job of keeping the ball in the infield with a man on second base. Saves a run, keeps the double play in order. Boy, good range there. Couldn't quite keep it in his glove. I think if he could have corralled that ball in his glove, he could have thrown him out. But uh, again, a nice defensive play. Six hits so far for Virginia Tech. We told you they came in. Six in the ACC with a 271 batting average, averaging seven runs a game. And keep in mind, their early season slate, series against Miami and North Carolina, Florida State, and at Clemson. I mean, right. that's just, that's you, you have tough. to wonder if, if they Whew. did something wrong in the <laughs> league office was making a pay as we're going to get a visit to the mound by the Tigers pitching coach, Andrew C., and perhaps trying to buy some time. Keep in mind, Anglin went three and two-thirds on Sunday. He's pitched two and a third so far today, but has thrown 61 pitches. Yeah. And I think this is also a momentum breaker. Just to slow them down a little bit. Hey, one pitcher out of the inning. That's, I mean, it's the kind of thing you talk about. Plan was to go to Matt Clark at some point in the middle innings, and you see the Tigers... Well, they certainly, Graduate student warming up in the pen. I'm sorry, uh, Pete. You certainly don't want to do it in the third, though. Yeah. I mean, you really were. You're hoping, uh, and, and, and despite the fact that the Clemson bullpen has been extraordinarily effective, you'd like to see your starting pitcher get you into the fifth, sixth. Of course, we mentioned Virginia Tech, so their baseball team watched their basketball team play right. in the NCAA. And, of course, this Tiger baseball team would love to get this game done. And, no doubt we'll be in front of the TV at 920 when the Tiger men take on Rutgers. Pitch to Hurley, taken for strike one. That basketball game with Virginia Tech, Florida at Hinkle Fieldhouse in, yes. in uh, Indianapolis. Where, where the sun Admirable. was shining through some of the windows that had to distract players because I, I can't imagine they'd played in an arena like that this year. And it's, the count goes 0-2. That's a venerable old place. It's remarkable, the history there. Yeah. And you're an Indiana guy, so you know it as well as anyone. And, by the way, congratulations to the Clemson women. They won their opening women's NIT game, outlasting Ohio 65-60 to in Charlotte, so they advance in that tournament. Hurley has driven home the only run of the game so far for Tech. He was hit by a pitch with the bases loaded in the home first giving him nine batted in on the season. Went to State College High School, grew up in the shadow of Penn State. Freshman from Bullsburg, Pennsylvania. 0-2 pitch. Gets a piece and the count. Remains 0-2 and you see the pitch count now, just shy of 65 for Anglin. Yeah. Well, he had the good second inning, but you know, long first and now this, this third inning is, is becoming long I'd like to see him climb the ladder right here with that fastball so Ohio in against the Pennsylvanian 0-2 pitch again from Anglin to Hurley off speed called strike three and another strikeout for the big right hander that's his fifth he went to that slider back that's about the third time he's gotten called strike three on a backdoor slider, and again, I've said it several times, but French does a great job of letting that ball get really deep. And the deeper it gets, this is coming. It, it, you know, it may it even break around the plate, but if the catcher catches it deep, it looks like it's right behind home plate to the umpire. Madden, the third baseman, struck out swinging to end the first. And strike one is the call. You notice French immediately asked for the appeal, but it had already been called a right. swinging strike by the home plate umpire. Four of ten in his career against Clemson pitching for Madden, but here he is in an 0-2 hole. Bases full once again, as was the case when he came up with two men out in the top half of the first inning.
Swing and a miss. Just like the first, Hokies have stranded half a dozen through the first three innings and six strikeouts for Mac Anglin. Tigers a 5-1 lead, mid-third. Bryce Hackenberg and French for the Tigers here in the home third. Clemson was a team that came in with issues with men in scoring position, but so far it's Virginia Tech leaving the bases loaded twice in the first three innings. Oh. Now the Tigers will try to add to that five spot they picked up in the home first. Bryce had a bloop single down the left field line. Get home the first run of the game as Kier Meredith scored. The freshman from just outside of Greenville with 12 batted in in the first month plus of his collegiate career. Well, it is really hard for a high school guy to step in at this level as a freshman and make the adjustment hitting. And you're putting this guy in the four hole. Clemson coaching staff thinks a lot of him. Five homers so far, and that has him on the first sheet among the NCAA home run leaders in Division I. Two and one the count. Of course, he's also a pitcher, but it looks like for now they're just going to focus on him more as a batter. Too, too much to do both, I think. Uh, maybe that's something down the line that... that... Good pitch. And two and two. You know, it's interesting when he got his first career start against Cincinnati on the first Sunday of the season. Monty Lee said it's probably the first time that Caden Grice has ever arrived at a ballpark on any level arriving just to pitch. Because as a youth right. player, high school player, when he pitched, he also hit. And you just have to wonder what kind of transition that is. And you have to think that maybe that, that impacted things for him. It's just right. not his normal flow right. at a ballpark. Oh, I see. Yeah. He's, he's used to doing he, he both instead of exclusively pitching. pitching. Yes. He probably never got into the ballpark where his head coach or manager said, all you're doing today is pitching until that Sunday against right. Cincinnati. 2-2. Two -two. There's that change up. And good discipline by the freshman. Two walks in the opening inning by Alford, who has had good control this season. One of them, Parker, came home to score. Right side against the shift. Schobel going to take a strong throw. Dug out of the dirt nicely by Rumfield for out number one. Rice got down that line pretty well for a big guy. The throw was going to be the key. And we've seen two nice scoops, although one was overturned by Rumfield. Good glove work at first. Hey, he did a nice job of, of reaching out, keeping the, keeping the glove parallel to the ground. Big curveball. Adam Hackenberg reaching on a fielder's choice, a dribbler in front of the plate in the first inning as Brewer was thrown out trying to score. So the first pitch is 72 mile an hour breaking pitch down big breaker and then that second pitch is 89 90 up in the strike zone that's moving the ball around in the strike zone that's how pitches are effective left side diving try Madden couldn't get it and it's a one out single for Hackenberg and for the Tiger designated hitter out of Palmyra Virginia that's hit number one on the season Had made a nice, nice attempt. Ball hit a little bit too hard, and it had eyes. French beat out an infield single with the bases loaded in the first inning. How often are you going to say that this year? With a catcher, yeah. <laughs> hey, go hard. You never know. Go hard down the line. Now driven home 11. Four home runs, second on the team to Grice. Change up. And he laid off for ball one, says our first base umpire, Blake Felix. Ooh, that's that was that was close. Uh, Alford is is using his changeup more than I anticipated. High 80s, low 90s fastball ripped, but it'll land fouls. It hits the fence down the left field line. 
There's a fastball over the middle of the plate that French was ready for, just couldn't couldn't keep it fair. Might have got in on him a little bit. French played at the famous Parkview High School, Lilburn, Georgia, Cobb County, just outside of Atlanta, with so many great players who have come through Parkview. A lot of good, a lot of good baseball played in that area. One one from Alford. Yep. And he gets ahead in the count. Lee noting Alford tends to be tougher on righties than he does on lefties. To second for one, to first. Nice scoop again by Rumfield. 5 4 3, double play, and that closes out the Tigers here in the third. 5 1, Clemson up on Alford and the Hokies. 5 1, our scores. We head to the fourth here at Doug Kingsmore Stadium. Jonathan French for the first time this season grounding into a double play. Tigers were. Trying to add on to this early lead. Really nice job on the short hop by Madden. Yeah, Madden with a great feed to Schobel and, and a good turn and an, another nice scoop by Rumfeld. Hokies turned their 22nd double play of the year. Matt Clark on in relief. This was the plan. They knew they'd be going to the lefty from Hilton Head at some point tonight, probably in the middle innings. And here he is in the fourth on in relief of Mac Anglin and the junior who is just grown into such a reliable piece of the puzzle for this Tiger team in his career, either as a starter or as a reliever. Four appearances so far. You see the good earned run average and 16 strikeouts, no walks in 15 innings of work. You know, we talked about uh, Anglin being a prototypical pitcher with his body and everything. Clark, not a real big guy, but just a really live arm. He's able to locate, change speeds, and a great competitor. Tigers got about as much as they could have asked out of Anglin. They wanted him to get through the order maybe twice, if not one and a half times or so. And yeah, well, he got through it twice. Basically, yeah, with uh, Kate Hunter about to right. lead things off here in the fourth inning. There. Catcher. And so he, Anglin, I think everything, especially getting out of a Bases loaded, no outs jam in the first oh. inning. There was some great growth there for the redshirt freshman. Now Clark, figure they're going to try to go uh, good ways with him. Coach Davis Sharp unavailable this weekend, so it's TBA as to who the Saturday starter will be. Hunter caught looking one of six strikeout victims of Anglin. Anglin striking out six of the nine outs he recorded in his abbreviated start this evening. Oh, and that's unintentional on the part of Clark. He needs to walk off, take a deep breath, regather yourself. Clark with. Usually, this is what warm ups are for to make sure you. Yeah, well, it, 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 his left foot slipped on the rubber. So it wasn't that he caught his cleat. 0-2, oh, yep. called strike three, inside edge, second time that Hunter goes down looking. Seven strikeouts for Tigers pitching. And just look at the location here, right on the inside corner. Little breaking ball. Started him off with a bigger breaking ball. Came in with a, a really, what I like about Clark, his arm is effortless. It doesn't appear that he's putting a lot of effort into it. He's just, he's getting a lot from his lower half. His arm works, and he's got good command. 15 and a third innings pitch. 17 strikeouts now for Clark here in 2021. Here's Genther, the shortstop, who grounded out to the second baseman, Henderson. His first time up in inning number two. Again, if you look at, if you look at Clark's delivery, his fastball 
and his slider or his breaking ball, they both look the same coming out of his hand. Comes out, right out of the same arm angle, same window. Really good pitch there, just down a little bit. But uh, the same window, and uh, it's, it's hard to pick up. And he's sneaky quick, so yeah. he threw an 88-mile-an-hour fastball that was waved on and missed moments ago, but it looked a lot quicker because of the, the slot being the same. Parker up with it. And one shortstop retires the other for out number two here in the Hokies half of the fourth inning. Top of the order, Carson Jones, one for two in the game, singled and scored in the first. Went down swinging in the second. Three eighty-five batting average when the game began. He hasn't homered this year and driven in three. And here's where the benefit of having the lefty come in from right. the bullpen against this Virginia Tech lineup really pays off. It'd be interesting if, if, if Coach Chef makes some makes some changes, get some some right-handed hitters in there. But I liked. The you know Anglin, you get him out of there, you know leading five to one, give him a little confidence for his next start, possibly, and and uh, and hopefully he's going to go a little bit longer. If you're a Tiger fan, skied left side, calling for it and putting it away, no trouble at all for Briar Hawkins. Tigers a five-one lead, series opener against the Hokies. With Ron Smith, Pete Gannity with you back at Doug Kingsmore Stadium as dusk slowly approaches on this mid-March evening. That Notre Dame team that came in and took two of three from Clemson earlier in conference play off to a 7-2 and two start. You see the Atlantic and Coastal Division standings and Bryce Teodosio trying to lead off of the bunt single, strike one. But the Tigers 1-5 and five out of the gate, so you figure... You're just trying to win series when you're in conference play. You, you really need to get a home series win here. Next series comes up on the road in Chestnut Hill against Boston College. Yeah. Still a lot of time, but boy, uh, yeah. tough well, to overcome a slow start. The bad thing, you're one in five. The good thing is you have 30 more to play, 30 more conference games. So. Teodosio taking off speed and falls in an 0-2 hole. Three for ten in his career coming into the ball game with a couple of homers and seven batted in against the Hokies. And he went down swinging in the first against Peyton Alford. Good take, and the count goes one and two. Yeah, just off. Swing and a miss. There's that changeup. Great location by Alford on that changeup. Really good pitch. Third strikeout in the game for the lefty out of Knoxville. Go ahead. Teodosio way out front. They've gotten, they've gotten him twice with changeups. So they, they, they've figured something out with him. Briar Hawkins, the big hit in the game so far that Bases clearing three-run triple in the first. Tigers putting up a five spot to answer a run in the top half of inning number one by Virginia Tech. And that's where he stood since. You know, if you look at, at Briar Hawkins and Elijah Henderson, you know, Hawkins hitting 148 coming in and, and Henderson 190. Boy, it's really important at the bottom of the order to get some guys at least on base and, and swing the bat a little bit and be competitive. Um because that sets the table for the leadoff guy. And it just, uh, it's important for those two guys to get going for the Tigers. One of the things Monty Lee thought about this batting order this year is he thought it would have some length that they yeah. may be pretty good one through nine. Not to say that still can't right. happen. Oh, and, and again, it's early, as we've mentioned a number of times. Hawkins played at West Forsyth High School in Cumming, Georgia, just north of Atlanta. Yes. And a call, strike three, two up, two down. Both on strikeouts for Alford in the Tigers' half of the fourth. He now has four in the game. 
you know, we talked about even Coach Chef talked about Alford's strength being his, you know, his fastball up, and he has not struck out many guys with that. He struck struck people out with with his change up and and, and his breaking pitch. Elijah Henderson popped out of the second baseman Shobalu made an above average play running toward center field over his shoulder to close out the Tigers five run first 62 pitches so far for Alford so he's really settled down after that rough first inning that was of his own doing a throwing yeah. error let Meredith reach two, and a couple walks. of walks and yeah. a, a hit by a, or a walk and a hit by a pitch were vital in that Tigers first inning and I think that's typical of, of a senior. I mean, yeah, I had a rough inning, but uh, there's a lot of ball game. I'm going to keep my team around and, and try to post a couple of zeros and give my team a chance to get back in the ball game. And two walks in the home first for the Tigers. It was a hit by pitch for the center fielder, Jack Hurley of Virginia Tech. That got home their only run with the bases loaded in the top half of the first. But the difference in this game is Clemson cashed in when they had the bags full and less than two outs. In their half of the first inning, Virginia Tech twice has left the bases loaded in this game. They've left six guys on, at least. Payoff pitch. They'll do it again. Henderson, who's played some outfield this year, now has found a home at second. The Greer native played at Blue Ridge High School. Three of 14 in his career against Virginia Tech coming into this series. And he has a two out walk. Third time this season that Henderson has reached via base on balls. Top of the order, Kier Meredith flied out to center his last time up. Reached on a throwing error by the pitcher and came around to score in the first inning. The fact that he's playing left field and they've got the runner picked off and the throw down will easily get Henderson. But good to see Meredith able to play in the outfield. Shows you he's over those leg issues. Right. Through four innings, 5-1. Clemson up on the Hokies. Bases loaded have been the story in this game. Hokies had the bags full, no one out in their half of the first. A storyline in this game, maybe for the season, the fact that Mac Anglin, who did hit Hurley, who got the RBI, worked out of it, though, with just the one run allowed. Bottom of the first, though, Tigers were able to cash in with the bases loaded. Right. Hawkins with the really, really big hit. And right there. There it is. The three-run triple. Turned a 2-1 game into a 5-1 ball game. I, I just thought Anglin showed a lot of poise in that situation. Gave up three base hits, bases loaded, nobody out. You got your best hitter in Rumfeld up and gets him to pop out and then a strikeout. And then I think he may have lost his focus a little bit, you know, not, not sure, but uh, walked a guy, but then uh, able to come back with a strikeout and, and, and limit the Hokies to, to one run. Matt Clark, second inning on relief of the starter, Anglin. Tigers trying to figure out how to retire this guy, Tanner Schobel. Freshman second baseman from Williamsburg, Virginia, played his high school ball at Washington Academy. Came in hitting 283, two for two with a couple of singles to left field tonight. And he's ahead in the count, 2-0. Seems like Clark's been in the Tiger program forever. forever. Still yeah. listed as a junior eligibility-wise. Right field, pretty well hit. Brewer, long run, and not going to get there. Extra bases. He thought about three, but Schobel will pull into second base with a leadoff double. Yeah, ill-advised to try to go to third base on that one with nobody out. Make your You don't want to make your first or third out at third base. Ooh. That ball actually came back to him a little bit. It looked like he had a chance to catch it, but 2-0, and, and, and he was up there hacking on a fastball, and he was able to, he's three for three now. Fifth double on the season for Schobel. That puts him into their team lead. 
And for the Hokies, seven hits in the game as we play here in the top of the fifth, but they've stranded six so far. Schobel is a, he's a freshman. He's not red shirt. Or... They've got some guys. Just watching them in batting practice, you had to be impressed with how they were stroking a lot of gap hits during BP. Guys weren't swinging for the fences on a night where they can look at the forecast like anyone else and yeah. tell the wind was going to be blowing out even though it's not doing anything right now. So runners in scoring position. Tigers three for six so far tonight. A Tiger team that was hitting below 200 coming in. Hokies just two of seven and they've been much better in that category. Yeah. And again, Clark falls behind two in and the count. Yeah. He looks so sharp that first inning. 2-0 to Schobel and gives up the double and now Cross up here at, in the 2-0 situation with nobody out. Gavin Cross, one for two in the game, flied out to Meredith and left his last time up when he faced Anglin in the third. Cross there slugging leader coming in at 769 and French will give chase count will go two and two good looking breaking ball by Matt Clark good location really changed speeds on 75 miles an hour Clark's fifth appearance of the season Could be out there for a while if things go according to plan. And I wouldn't be stunned if you see him a lot in long relief on Friday nights. Ripped high and pretty well hit down the line in right. Over is Brewer. Nice grab in foul territory. Bobbles. Runner was going to tag and move on to third anyway, but that is a big out on a difficult play down the line. Tough play because, of course, he's not only dealing with trying to catch the ball, but that wall is right there. I think he had a catch, and it was his eagerness to get the ball into his throwing hands that, that, that he bobbled it. Schobel advancing to third, where he stands with one man out. And the cleanup hitter, Rumfield. Opportunity for the Hokies to chip away, and they will. That'll make it a 5-2 game. Schobel coming across. Eighth hit so far for the Hokies, and their top hitter drives home his 11th run of the season. Well, once again, you see a, you know, a big, strong guy like Rumpfel. Just, just a nice, smooth swing and, and hitting a line drive. Gets the run in. Kind of a long reach on that off-speed pitch. Yeah. He knew he could take his time with it. He kept his bat in the hitting zone for a long time. Rumfield's now two for three. Swisher, the DH, taking strike one. In there because of his pop, three homers so far this season. Came in with a 200 batting average. Caught looking against Anglin in the first, and he singled off the Tiger righty in the third when the Hokies loaded him up with just one out, but Anglin closed out his night by getting Hurley, the center fielder, looking and Madden, the third baseman, swinging for his fifth and sixth strikeouts in his three innings of work. Big cut that time. The count goes one and two. You saw French setting up down and away, and Clark elevated that fastball. Lefty from Hilton Head Island. A swing and a miss. Foul tip. French hangs on. Second strikeout and a big one for Clark for out number two. Well, again, the previous... Pitch was was kind of up and in, and then that that down and away nasty breaking ball. Good pitch by Matt Clark. 
Hurley a hit by pitch RBI for their first run in the first inning. As we told you, caught looking with the bases full in the Hokies' third. Off speed, 75 miles an hour that time, and he was way out in front of it. If he can keep that location of that breaking pitch there, he's very effective. And, and I like him coming up in it off of it a little bit, too. He's usually a down and away guy. Virginia Tech, we list him as number 25 in the nation in one ranking. They're as high as number 13 in the polls in Baseball America. Yeah. Off to a 9-6 and six start. Five and four. So far for this Virginia Tech team in ACC play, although it seems like even better because of the success they had in series against North Carolina and Miami. And they had to face Florida State. Just trying to sneak it inside the third base bag. Pretty big shift here. Haven't seen quite as much of that. But uh, this is a pretty significant defensive shift for the Tigers. Hokies winning series against the Hurricanes and Tar Heels and then losing two out of three against the Seminoles of Florida State. 1-2 pitch, man on first, 2-2 two -two the count. Got to be ready if you're the third base coach. Got to charge that, man. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that time their hitting coach is also their third base coach, Kurt Elbin. Give him the E5. Swing and a miss. Third strikeout since coming on in relief for Clark. And that shuts things down for the Hokies here in their half of inning number five. They do get a run, but Matt Clark and the Tigers. A 5-2 advantage, middle of the fifth. Five two Tigers. We head to the bottom of the fifth inning. A Friday night at Doug Kingsmore Stadium. Limited capacity, but a nice turnout for this series opener against Virginia Tech with Ron Smith, Pete Yannity back with you. We talked about it moment in the game early on when Mac Anglin, the Clemson starter, was facing a bases loaded, no out situation. To get out of that, allowing just one run, that that could be the moment of the season for a Clemson team trying to turn it around. Well, he showed great great poise and he was facing their best hitter got him to pop up then got the strikeout and, and ended up lim lim limiting them to just one run so just a, a super job by him getting out of there now on the other hand Al Alford you know he was he gave up five there partly his his fault with the two walks in the air but uh boy he has settled down since that first inning he has been lights out since that first inning and the Tigers have not been able to push anything else across to this point. 5-4-0 oh for Clemson. 2-8-1 and one for Virginia Tech. That one error on the pitcher and a very big one indeed. It was when Meredith first pitch right. in the bottom half of the first inning laid down a bunt and was able to get to second base. Might have been out with a good throw, but it sailed above the first baseman Rumfield, and that got things going for the Tigers in that five-run first. Little looper into left field. And it'll be a blue pit behind shortstop against the shift for Kier Meredith, who reaches base in this ball game for a second time. The Tigers have a leadoff runner here in the home fifth. I would take a hundred of those. <laughs> and you think about it, in the first inning, the Tigers indeed got a bloop off the bat of Caden Rice That's to get a right. run in and a blast, the three-run triple in the left center field gap by Briar Hawkins. Here's Dylan Brewer, the right fielder who walked and was later thrown out at the plate in the first and then grounded out. Catcher to first, his last time up. First pitch swinging, a wave and a miss. Brewer, the second season for him in the Clemson program from the Dillon County town of Latta, just off I-95 over in the PD region of South Carolina. 0 for 4 with a walk Tuesday night against Georgia State. Came into tonight hitting 261. Currently at 255 and now behind the count 0-2 against Alford who struck out four. 
There's that change up. Well, got a little sink. He's used that very effectively tonight. Alford has the sign he wants. Lefty from Knoxville. 0 2 pitch. Swing and a miss. One away in the Tigers' fifth. Fifth strikeout of the game for the senior pitcher. You know, for me, that would not have been a bad time. Of course, not with two strikes, but he's not seeing Alford real well. Maybe bunt for a hit, and if nothing else, you get the run to the runner to second base with one out, uh, and, and and possibly create you know get him moving off the mound again because he's settled in since that first right. inning. Remember the fourth inning ended with. Alford picking off the Tiger base runner Henderson. That time they thought they might have Meredith leaning. Meredith just 0 for 1 this year. But they know he's a threat. Parker at the plate over one of the games. Struck out swinging his last time up. Walked and scored in the first. Tigers leading hitter. Shortstop with a 351 batting average as the night began. And once again, chasing Meredith back to first. Parker had a 12-game hitting streak carry into this season all the way through the opening series, but came to an end against ETSU. But he has been the most consistent Tigers batter through the first 15 or so games on the year. Alford might have been a little preoccupied with with Meredith, and if you got guys that can steal bases, it, it's just another pressure on a pitcher. Yeah. Off speed, count goes one and one. Parker's lone hit in his Tiger career against the Hokies, a double in that series in 2019. Again, this, this changeup that Alfred has been able to come in here with tonight, and it's not something that Coach Chef talked about before the game, but obviously he's got a good one tonight, and they're putting it to good use. More of a fastball curve guy. Right. And upper fastball kind of guy in the high 80s, low 90s. Most importantly for them, and here he is at 76 pitches, he's gotten them four and a third. Meredith on the run, low throw, and Meredith will have his first stolen base of the season. A low pitch, rather, and scooped out of the dirt by the catcher, Hunter, but he never had a chance to yeah, it. make a throw good, with a jump. Really good jump by, by Meredith and good, good read. Yeah, Hunter had absolutely no chance to throw him out. He could have caught it cleanly. It would not have mattered. Tigers now 11 out of 16 on stolen base tries this year. And one for two on the night as Meredith picked up his first. And now Parker with a man in scoring position. Earlier we showed you that graphic. Clemson three of six tonight hey, with Mason, runners on second and third. And so it's got to bring up that season-long batting average in that category. Three-one, Parker takes, and the count goes full. I think he that was, it was close. a little bit inside. Yeah. Mm. Parker, a couple of home runs and eight batted in to this point in the campaign. Payoff pitch with Meredith on second and one away. And a swing and a miss. 89 miles an hour, but right where he wanted to locate it. There was that, there was the there was the strikeout pitch that we've were told so much about. And coming off that that change up that, that is sinking a little bit. He's throwing that 89, 90 mile an hour fastball up in the strike zone. And that probably was out of the strike zone, but really hard to lay off of it. Rice one for two with that bloop in the first that brought home Meredith for the game's first run. An opportunity to answer the run of the top half of this fifth inning by Virginia Tech. 
240 for the true freshman. My goodness. That's a physical presence in the middle of your lineup and just a freshman. He is certainly a big one. Boy, home run swing that time. If you're wondering, all for on the season. He's only given up one long ball. But the Tigers' top power hitter with five on the year. A Clemson team through the first 14 games that hit 17 home runs. One-one. And now he is a strike away from leaving a man stranded at second. Six strikeouts so far on the night for a guy who came in with 25 in his first 14 innings of work this season. One-two. Seven strikeouts, strikes out the side, five in the books. Tigers got all of their work done offensively in the home first inning. A 5-2 lead holds up, but Peyton Alford has settled in for Virginia Tech. Peyton Alford has settled in after that five-run first for the Tigers on the night. Seven strikeouts. He's really kept Clemson batters guessing. I've done a great job using... That high fastball that we were aware of, but also been very effective with his changeup. He's retired 11 of the past 12 batters that he's faced. And actually, if you look at the fact that now he was able to pick off Elijah Henderson back in the fourth inning, it's pretty Based clean the slate yeah. from the second inning on. You see the starting work of Mac Anglin on the right. What a start he gave the Tigers with a half a dozen strikeouts, most importantly working out of a bases loaded, no out jam in the top half of the first inning, allowing just that one run. Well, we talked about Coach Lee mentioning that he had starter stuff, and, and boy, we saw it tonight. Really sharp with his, with his slider and, and again showed a lot of poise and a lot of guts getting out of that first inning jam where the bases were loaded with no one out. Past 13 batters, 12 of the 13 have either been retired or picked off a base. That was after the walk by Henderson that we alluded to. Right. Here, Meredith did get Clemson's fifth hit in the game to lead things off in the Tigers' half of the fifth inning, but he was left stranded at second. So here we go now, sixth inning. And the Hokies, team that came in, we told you, averaging seven runs a game. And Kevin Madden, their third baseman, 0 for 2 so far on the night with a couple of strikeouts. Those came against Anglin. First time he'll face Clark, who came out of the bullpen for Clemson to start the fourth inning, and he starts out Madden with a strike. Well, the, di the difference in this ball game has been the, the hitting with men on base. The, you know, the Hawkins with the, with the huge hit for the Tigers and the inability of, of Virginia Tech to come up with that, with that big hit with runners on second and third or bases loaded. Fouled out of play. Count goes one and two. Madden's claim to fame, not only is he a starting third baseman of the ACC, but his first cousin is one Joe Flacco. So you would suppose that holiday gatherings over the years, presumably, if Flacco was able to make it, maybe during a off season, they threw the football around yeah. in the backyard. <laughs> Here we go. Clark, third inning of work, ripped. Knocked down at third. Strong throw, and Hawkins got it done at the plate in the first inning, and that time, Cooley handled the deflection, and it's out number one. Well, that that was not a good two-strike pitch, but a really nice play by Hawkins. The ball was well hit. Second hop kind of ate him up just a little bit, but he picked it up calmly and made a strong throw. Hokies will go to their bench for the first time tonight. Thought we might see them change things up with the fact that they had fallen behind and... Uh, Tigers went from a righty to a lefty. So Jonas Seegers, who's seen his fair share of time, 
Just a 182 hitter, but he's done a nice job getting on base. Leads them with 14 walks, and he takes ball one. So he's the pinch hitter in place of Cade Hunter, their catcher. Seeger's a sophomore from Gainesville, Virginia. Went to Battlefield High School. And he waves at strike one. Actually has faced Tigers pitching before 0 for 3 in the series a couple of years ago against Clemson. He was 1 for 2 with a strikeout as a pinch hitter and then left fielder in their loss Tuesday night against UNCG up in Blacksburg. Two one pitch. Two and two. Clark with three strikeouts since coming on in relief of Anglin. Tigers pitching tonight. Nine Hokies sent down via the strikeout. Well, Clark continuing the, the good work out of the bullpen for Clemson. You see French turning to the home plate. So where was that? Asking if that was just slightly high because yeah. that was a uh, that was close. pretty good pitch. Count goes full. Thompson, 47, 24, and 2 all time against Virginia Tech. Frankly, I wish they would not include ties in either coaches' <laughs> records or series records. Just call them no contests. That might have gotten a piece. It was going to be ball four anyway, and a one-out base runner here in the sixth for the Hokies. Seeger's on the base pass this year, two of five in his stolen base attempt. A little breaking ball that just... Yeah, it got him on the front knee. Second batter this year hit by a pitch by Clark. Ninth place hitter in the order. The shortstop Genther stands in. Told you the Hokies just trying to chip away and playing some small ball, but that was not in the plan. And easy enough for French for out number two. So a gift second out in the inning as boy right there in front of home plate and French actually had time under it. Well, you see, he's, he's trying to bunt for a base hit and and just got under it. But uh, those are the kind of things that you just you just shake your head and go, why? Why did I do this? But uh, he's just trying to get some more runners. You're down three, and uh, he was bunting for a base hit. Ball was up. Probably should have taken it because the pitch was high enough that uh, that's a tough situation to get down. It's really a hard pitch to, to get down, particularly down the third baseline. So, Top of the order, Carson Jones, one for three in the game, and you saw Clark is going to pay attention to Seegers at first. Seegers reaching on his second hit by pitch this year. And we told you a couple of bags swiped in five attempts so far in 2021. Hey, good pitch. A good pitch right there. Jones, one of the many in this lineup who stand 6 2 or larger for Virginia Tech. They've got a, an imposing lineup. You're right. Just standing around the cage. It almost looked like a basketball yeah, team yeah. was taking batting practice before the game. Clark trying to be a steadying influence for this Clemson pitching staff. Davis Sharp is not available this weekend. He would have been the starter on Saturday. But an injury will... Keep him out of action at least through the weekend against Virginia Tech as the count goes two and one now on the left fielder. Jones, who popped out to the third baseman Hawkins, his last time up in the fourth inning. And again, the throw over. Hey, you see this Tiger defense. I'm looking, you know, with two outs men on first base, usually you deepen up a little bit. They're 
playing pretty much regular depth. I don't think they have a lot of respect for Jones's power potential. Up the middle, nice diving stop. Henderson, and he's able to shovel on to Parker. Boy, that looked like it was destined for center field. Another top shelf play by the Tigers' second baseman, Elijah Henderson, ranging to his right. And able to get it to the shortstop to close it out for Virginia Tech as they strand another runner. Bottom of the sixth inning for the Clemson Tigers with a 5-2 lead on Virginia Tech. First of a weekend series in ACC play. Kind of been sunshine off and on throughout the day. Clouds overhead, and that's the look as twilight soon turns to full darkness here at Doug Kingsmore Stadium. Adam Hattenberg. Is that Dane Leonard behind the plate now? Scored a run on this game. Also singled his last time up in the third for his first hit of the year. New catcher in the game after Seegers came on to pinch hit. In the top half of this inning, and the new catcher is Dane Leonard. He is a freshman out of Spring Green, Wisconsin. Came to them by way of Des Moines Area Community College. He's there in place of Hunter, who started and was taken down for the pinch hitter Seegers in the top half of the sixth inning. Hackenberg, second game back, returned to action in the win against Georgia State on Tuesday night. Pitch count getting close to 90 for the starter, Peyton Alford of Virginia Tech, but he's given him the start that they were looking for and has really done nicely since giving up that five spot in the really? Tigers' half of the first inning. Yeah, as a senior, he just he showed his experience, showed his competitiveness, did not panic, and has come out and been very, very effective. Oh, man, boy, that boy. ball almost ate him up. Woo. Tough hop, and he still had time, did Madden, to get out number one. Madden, Madden showed some really good hands here because this ball had some big top spin on it. Woo. Yep, he got it. And then a strong throw. That was a nice play. We've got a team with a bunch of guys who can be in their program for several years to come. And as you know, usually after three seasons, guys move on. But their fourth year head coach, John Sheff, has done a nice job building a very solid team. A year ago when play stopped, they were out to an 11 and 5 start. They were just 1 and 2 in the ACC. But here they are at 9 and 6, 5 and 4. But those five wins. Juggernaut of a, of a schedule. Yeah, against the likes of Miami, North Carolina, and Florida State. Tigers catcher Jonathan French had an infield single for an RBI in the first and later scored. And now looks like he... Came close to getting a second hit of the night, but it hung up long enough for Hurley, the center fielder. Two up, two down for the Tigers here in their half of the six. Bryce Teodosio has gone down swinging in his first two plate appearances on the night. Both with cha change-ups. They've been very, very effective against Bryce. Three for 12 with a couple of home runs and seven batted in against Virginia Tech in his career. And he takes ball one. Tidioso hitting seventh in the order and someone who's been much more consistent at the plate this year for this Clemson team than his prior three seasons. Well, he's always been an outstanding outfielder. As good as there is, I think, in the ACC and in college baseball for that matter. Let's see if Madden has room over near the dugout, but it hits off the roof. And the ground he covers, I mean, Ugh. talk about a pretty high war. And from a defensive standpoint, the metrics on him are probably out of this world in terms of his catch-up speed. Uh, balls batted out his way. You have to be strong up the middle defensively. You have to, you know, solid catching, shortstop, second baseman and center field. And I know that he hasn't early in his career produced offensively the way they would have liked, but what he does defensively is has is, is been extraordinary. 
stays high. Two and one the count. Seven strikeouts in the game for Alford, giving him 32 on the season. In 19 and two-thirds innings. Well, and there's there's that high, high fastball that Teodosio was able to lay off of. We'll see if they go back even in this 3-1 count if they have enough confidence in Peyton Alford to throw a strike with a changeup. There it was. Center field pretty well hit. Hurley back at the hill. The wall, and it's out of here. A deep blast. Right center field over the back bleachers for Bryce Teodosio and the Tigers center fielder, Adam Alden, with his third round tripper of the year. Well, he did go back to that changeup, 79-mile-an-hour mi- uh, changeup that was right over the middle of the plate. And Teodosio sat back on it really, really well and hit it to right center field. Strong kid. And, you know, I was just thinking, you know, the Tigers got five in the first and, and, and then went four innings in a row without even really coming close. They needed to get a little bit of momentum back, and that certainly helps. Just the second hit off Alford since the first inning yeah. outburst. Teodosio now, not only a third homer this season, his second on the week, and he's got three in his career against Hokies pitching. That one ripped to right center field by Hawkins, but it is run down by Cross just in front of the wall. Tigers build the lead back out to four runs as we head to the seventh. On to the seventh inning in a 6-2 game. Tigers getting their first run since that five-run first on the deep drive with the wind ever so slightly blowing out to right center field but Teodosio would have hit that out even if the wind were blowing in he really got a hold of it that ball was really really well hit stayed back got a lot of power from his lower half and he squared it up and against a pitcher Alford whose control is really good and on the season just the second home run that he's allowed. So that's another feather in Teodosio's cap. So the Hokies again down by four. And okay, the Tigers have had a hard time getting out tonight. In fact, they have not retired him this evening. Schobel, the second baseman, will lead things off. Doubled and scored his last time up in the fifth. True freshman, impressive. And the Pitch off the glove. Ball one, one and two. Matt Clark on a relief of Mac Anglin, the starter. Clark coming on in the fourth, so now in his fourth inning of work. But as we had noted, you get the impression he's got a chance to go way deep in this game if he can keep them right here. They may have just retired Schobel for the first time tonight. French just in fair territory. And the second baseman for the Hokies is now three for four. Yeah, French did a nice job of getting out there, getting that ball in front of him, not directly over his head. I thought maybe that uh, Grice might have had a little better opportunity to catch it, but uh, French did a nice job. And, and again, you've got Clark, Matt Clark, just he's locating pretty well. He's not putting pitches down the middle of the plate. Uh, doing a really nice job for the Tigers. Here's Cross, right fielder, did a nice job going back on that drive by Hawkins in the bottom half of the sixth inning, making the catch on the hill just in front of the fence. Single was first time up. as Slims flied out to left field and then to right field. So a one for three night so far for the Bristol Tennessee native. Played at Tennessee High in that city that straddles the Tennessee-Virginia border. Gosh, we're getting geography lessons and everything tonight. I'm learning things. He's trying to bring a lot of things to the table here. He did not see action in that midweek loss to UNCG. Came in second on their team with a 385 batting average. And he takes a strike as the count goes. Two and two. It was a two-one pitch that was just delivered. So now 
Things are even at two and two. Clark trying for a fourth strikeout since coming on in relief. Shot to center, Teodosio on his horse. Lines it up with the wind blowing from left to right. Pretty strong now. That ball just kind of died as it got to the glove of Teodosio. And it's two away. At times tonight, it's looked like that out there in right center. But at other times, the flags have just been steadily right there uh, along the poles. But now the wind's picked up again. Rumfield, 24 hits to this point in the season with two more this evening. Drove home their second run. His last time up in the fifth, but here he is. Two outs, no one on. Top half of the seventh. Hokies this season when trailing after seven. 0 for 5. So five of their six losses have come when they've been down through seven innings. I like Rumfield's approach. He puts that bat into the hitting area early and keeps it there a long time. So he's got a, a you know, maybe a, a, a foot to 18 inches where he puts that bat on the plane of the ball. Doesn't try to do too much. That's why he, doesn't, he struck out three times. Pretty impressive for a big guy. Just three strikeouts coming into this game, a batting average near 400. Look at him shorten up there with two strikes. 61 at bats on the season. And with eight walks on the year coming in, he's had roughly 70 plate appearances and just three strikeouts. But he'll face a 1-2 pitch upcoming from Clark, who, since he entered the game, has thrown nearly 60. And again, fights it off out of play. Well, you can see why he's a tough strikeout. He shortens up so much and just basically plays pepper. Rumfield out of Temple, Texas. Pretty good ways from home. And from one tech to the other, began his career at Texas Tech. Right side, Parker the shortstop had him played in the shift and Bryce unable to contain it at first. Let's see how they score the error on the play. Good job backing up by French. I think that's an error on, on Grice. It's hard to overthrow a guy who stands 6'6". Well. You see that Grice, you see where his left foot was? He needed to step with his left foot towards the ball. He had his left foot going towards second base, so he wasn't able to, to reach up quite as much. And I don't know who they gave the air to, but gave I gave it to the shortstop, Parker. Did they? Yeah, okay. He had six on the play. So, first error in the game for a Tigers team that's been fielding pretty well. And that even sings in that category at one apiece. Of course, it was an error in the first inning that was a. Big part of the Tigers five spot. Yep. Swisher one for three there. DH. Backup infielder. Just outside of Richmond in Chesterfield, Virginia. This is his hometown. Uh, you're going back to that play though that Grice as a first baseman. The closer the infielder is to you as a first baseman, the more you have to bend your knees and especially a big guy like that. So you have the agility to step to the baseball, wherever the throw takes you. And he actually, again, stepped towards second base, and the ball was much more towards the outfield side. I think if it'd be interesting to see later on if you see a play like that, if he makes that play, because I'll bet the Clemson coaches will talk to him about that, and that's certainly a, an adjustment, and that's part of getting better. Swing and a miss. Fourth strikeout for Clark. Tenth by Tigers pitching tonight. 6-2. Seventh inning stretch time here at Doug Kingsmore. Tigers built the lead from 5-2 to 6-2 last inning because Bryce Teodosio ran into one. Third homer of the year, his third against Virginia Tech pitching during his Clemson career. He knew it when it left the bat. He gets the home run sledgehammer. And the Tigers on the season now, playing their 15th game. 18 long balls, 
as a team. So here we go in the bottom half of the seventh inning. And Elijah Henderson standing in. The second baseman reaches last time up on a walk. That was in the fourth inning, but was subsequently picked off by the starter, who is still out there for Virginia Tech, Peyton Alford. Skied high and deep to left. Where's that one going to land? Way out of here. Elijah Henderson joins the home run party, his first of 2021. Well, Henderson sitting on a pitch, and he certainly got it and put a great swing on it. I was a little surprised to see Alford come back out there. He's at, what, 90 pitches, and, and maybe has lost a little bit. That last pitch was 89 miles an hour. The uh, exit speed off the bat was 100 miles an hour. It was, it was well hit, 370 feet. Very impressive. And, Tank you know, Alford. Coach Lee talked about... We've got to get the bottom of our order going, Hawkins and Henderson. And uh, certainly Henderson delivered there. They've gotten two home runs and a triple and five batted in out of the seventh, eighth, and ninth place hitters tonight. Henderson, a no-doubter, as evidenced by the gentle flip. Not showing the other team up right now. Uh, <laughs> he knew of, it was gone. A little yeah. bit of style to go with the substance. Boy, Top of the order, Kier Meredith. But a, a, really a fastball right down the middle. Right down the middle. Meredith reached on a single in the fifth stole. His first base of the season was left stranded at second. Alford had really settled down after that first inning. Came into the game allowing just one long ball so far, but he's yeah. given up two tonight and two in the past couple of innings. And right. As you see, he's over 100 pitches, so fatigue may be... Uh, at least a part of that. Right. No, no. Virginia Tech has somebody up in the bullpen. Certainly can't can't afford to get much further behind down five at this point. And only six outs to go. Boy, nearly a really good piece of hitting that yeah. time by Meredith, but it's 0-2. See, I like Meredith shortening up with two strikes. Use your speed. Put the ball on the ground. Gosh, if he hits the ball to the right of Ginther... He's not going to throw him out uh, it, it, because he runs so well. So he's just got to put that ball in play at this point, put some pressure on the defense. One and two the count. If you can see here, the defense is uh, – uh, Genther is shading towards second base. Anything hit to his right, unless it's hit really hard – it's going to be a really tough play for him to throw Meredith out. Count two and two. Meredith, a guy with his speed, you really want to see him pound the ball into the ground. Get a lot of ground balls, high chops or yeah. something you want to see. And we saw him try to lead the game off with a, a bunt for a single. He ended up on first because of the throwing error. But if he could be able to lay him down or drag him, he could get on base a whole lot that way. And he works the count to three and two. Well, you got you have to admire Peyton Alford. I mean, it, it, you know what great competitiveness he's shown, and really settled in, and and you know posted uh, you know four uh, zeros in a row. Foul past the diving Rumfield, and and it does set chance. them up for the weekend. Yeah, it sets and, them up well for well, the, that's for right. the weekend. That's well, right. Good point. But, get here into the seventh. Right. Get, get, Gave his chance a team to get back into the game uh, after giving up five in the first. Uh, but, you know, the Clark has come in and, and really been good. Yep. Good. Paul, strike three. Meredith thought it was low, but another Tiger rung up on that strikes. Was, that was a good pitch. Eighth strikeout of the night for Alford. So he continues to build his numbers in that category. Second time, he's gotten a Tiger to go down looking. And that that was a 91-mile-an-hour fastball. He reached back a little bit there. Brewer struck out, swinging his last time up. 0 for 2 on the night with a walk. Noah Johnson, a lefty, is working in the Hokies bullpen. you got to think this is the last inning 
for the starter, Alford. I would be shocked to see him come out for the eighth inning. They've not only got a bunch of lefties in their lineup, they've they got, got a bunch lefty of lefties pitchers. in their bullpen. Yeah. They are Team Southpaw. As the count goes, one and two. There's that high fastball. That's that swing and miss, miss pitch that uh, Coach Sheffs talked about. Their starter tomorrow is Chris Girard. He's a lefty. He's going to go against a Tiger starter to be announced. Boy, was trying to work the outer edge that time, but it stays away. Tigers will not be able to send Davis Sharp to the hill tomorrow or Sunday. He has been scratched due to an injury. I've got to think that Matt Clark will be sent out there not only to get three outs in the eighth, but maybe to get the final six outs of this game. Swing and a miss. Second strikeout in the inning. Nine on the night. Well, I think if if he has a strong eighth inning, there's no reason why he shouldn't go out for the ninth. But there's that riding fastball that just carries. Thirty-four strikeouts on the season now for Alfred. Parker has gone down twice on strikes. Swinging both times after he walked and scored in the first. That was a good hack. Yeah. And you could, you could see the uh, velocity as he's just cutting it loose now, knowing that his night is just yeah, about done. Right. Still staying in the he's, low nineties. Yeah. He's not leaving anything in the tank, and you have to admire that. That one is ripped high and deep to left. Is it a second homer in the inning? It is. James Parker goes deep. Third home run hit by the Tigers over the past two frames. And that was an inside changeup that Parker was able to stay back on and keep it fair. Got his hands inside the ball. Didn't hook it foul because that was really inside corner. He did a great job of getting his hands inside the ball. Tigers building on the lead. It's an 8-2 game. And Parker with home run number three on the year. That matches him on the Tigers list with Teodosio. Homered in the sixth. And they grow their biggest lead of the night. And I believe that is going to be it. They were trying to get Alford through the seventh inning. Right. But 117 pitches, 74 of them for strikes through six and two-thirds. He had allowed just one home run on the season. Coming in, Alford on the year. This was his fifth appearance and his fourth start. And through the first 19 innings of the season pitch, he'd allowed just one home run, but he gave up the deep drive to right center off the bat of Teodosio in the sixth, and then a couple of blasts here in the seventh. Henderson and Parker pitching change. Tigers have an 8-2 lead in inning number seven. Tigers started a pitcher, Mac Anglin, from the state of Ohio. And for the first time tonight, Virginia Tech goes to the bullpen and brings in a lefty from Toledo, Ohio, the 6'5". Noah Johnson, you see his numbers on the year for the freshman who played at Toledo St. Francis, a very good athletic program at that Northwest Ohio school. Seventh appearance. They have gotten really good work out of their bullpen. And this lefty will try to keep things where they are, but the Tigers have... Blown this game open yeah. after taking a 5-1 lead through one. Hokies had made it a 5-2 game, but three home runs in the past two innings have built the lead to the largest margin of the night at a six-run advantage, 8-2. to two. And, and two of the home runs came on pitches that were, had been very, very effective uh, for Alford, and it was that changeup. He was getting people left and right with that with that changeup, but uh, Teodosio's ball was was a changeup, and he took that to right center field. And uh, then, of course, Parker with a with a changeup that was eh, up and in a little bit, and and he was able to keep it fair and drive it into the left field stands. Six and two thirds for the starter Alford, who's on the hook for the loss. Caden Grice, the Tigers. 
home run leader has seen the ball sail out of the park over the past couple of frames. He probably wants to get into the act. Eight runs, eight hits allowed, nine strikeouts for the starter, Alford. Johnson, another one of the players on this roster who could play small forward for a lot of yeah. Division I basketball teams, one and one to count. Again, uh, you, you mentioned the physicality of this, this Virginia Tech club. Another big kid out there on the mound. And facing a 6-6 Tigers first baseman who skies it high to center field. He just missed that. Yes, he did. Hurley moving all over the place and a little bit of a tumble for effect. But the Tigers strike for two more. Two home runs in the inning. The first was a absolute blast to left field by Elijah Henderson, his first of the year. James Parker also went long ball. Head to the eighth. Tigers up 8-2. A2 as we head to the eighth inning. Tigers this year 6-0 and and leading after seven. Certainly was an adventurous moment for Jack Hurley, the Virginia Tech center fielder, for that last out of the seventh inning. He had started way to his left, came back to his right, and eventually hit the turf. Yeah, New pitcher for the Tigers in the third one of the ninth, the Charleston, South Carolina native Jeffrey Gilbert, who has in effect been the de facto closer, at least one of those they've counted on in late innings, and they're probably going to look here where it's not a save situation, but for him to get the Close final six out. outs. Yeah, yeah, he needs to come in throwing strikes. You got that nice six-run lead. He needs to fill up that strike zone. Good work by yeah. Clark in relief oh, of Anglin, the super starter, top. as Clark allowed one run in four innings of work. He had four strikeouts. And the Hokies managed just one uh, couple of hits against them back in, uh, in one frame in the fifth inning when Schobel had the leadoff double and eventually came home on Rumfield's RBI single. Start things out with the guy who had that crazy play in center, Hurley, here in the top half of the eighth inning. He's ahead in the count 2-0 and and now 3-0. and And that so often happens, the yeah. guy who makes the... Notable play in the field, leads off the next half inning. Yeah, he made the easy play look hard. <laughs> Supposed to do it the other way. Tigers bullpen that began the night with a 3.07 earned run average. Clark continued to spiral that downward, but first batter to face Gilbert reaches on a free pass. The second walk allowed by Gilbert this season. 11 and two thirds innings of work in relief out of that Tiger bullpen. Here's Madden, the third baseman, 0 for 3 on the night of the plate, but he's made a couple of really nice plays at third. And another one out of the strike zone for Gilbert. Six, eight, uh, eight, eight, and one for the Tigers. Two, eight, and one for Virginia Tech. Off speed for the strike. Count goes one and one. I love it. I mean, he, he threw uh, five pitches in a row that were fastballs out of the strike zone. And Coach Andrew C, the pitching coach, says, hey, let's try something else. So he throws a beautiful breaking ball for a strike. Popped up. The pitcher calling for it. And Gilbert for out number one. And another breaking ball. Yeah, five pitches in a row out of the strike zone, fastballs. He says, okay, let's, <laughs> let's try something else. Well done. Tigers views two lefties in this game tonight. Keyshawn Askew on their release ahead of this series, listed as the Sunday starter, of course. He's a lefty. Yeah. And against this lefty-laden tech lineup, you certainly want to see that. First plate appearance in the game for Dane Leonard. He came on a couple of innings ago as a defensive replacement for Cade Hunter after doing the Seegers pinch hit for him in the sixth inning. 
Another, another young player in this Hokies program listed as a freshman. Off speed, stays away. Count goes one and one. Gilbert kind of cast that one, never got out in front of himself and didn't probably didn't break his hands well enough, didn't give his arm a chance to, to get that breaking ball out front. Didn't mean to, couldn't hold up, one and two. He's, he still hasn't thrown a strike with a, with a fastball. <laughs> and French each time has asked for an appeal in those situations, and the man right behind him, the home plate umpire, Jeff Doy, has already called it yeah. a swinging strike. So there it is. A swing and a there miss. There it is. Gilbert adding to his strikeout total on the season. That's out number two here in the eighth. That's a real good pitch. Little movement, little late life. Started right on the corner and broke just a little bit off. Good looking pitch. Tough pitch to lay off of for Leonard. A pinch hitter here. Gilbert now with 20 strikeouts on the season in 12 and a third innings of work. Pinch hitter for the Hokies. Taking strike one and it's Lucas Donton, a freshman out of McLean, Virginia. Backup infielder, Donlin. Falls behind at the count, 0-2. Tigers trying to get a second ACC win on the year and get this series off on the right foot. 0-2 pitch. Left field, Meredith turns in front of the hill. Almost went too far back. Out number three, bottom of the eighth, upcoming 8-2 eight Tigers. Tigers have hit three home runs in this game, each since the sixth inning. And in the seventh frame, the second long ball, a line shot by James Parker. Third on the season for the Tigers' top hitter. He's now driven home nine runs. That's built the lead to 8-2. That's where we stand as we go to the bottom of the eighth. Another pitcher on, Peter Sacalaris out of Milton, Massachusetts, a freshman. Third pitcher in the game for this Hokies team after Alford got him all the way into the seventh inning, six and two-thirds the starter, but allowed the eight Clemson runs, and he is on the hook for the loss in his second appearance against the Tigers. Sacalaris, we notice kind of a wiry motion. Well, he drops down a little bit. Unconventional. I'm sure he's going to have his fastballs, going to have some sink and come in on the righties. Adam Hackenberg. Tigers DH, first pitch swinging. Hurley back to his left, just shy of the hill, out number one. Hackenberg, one for four on the night, picked up his first hit of the season in this game, just his second game back from injury. And that's how the bottom of the eighth begins for the Tigers team as Jonathan French stands in. French infield single, RBI, and scored a run on the five-run Clemson first. He's also grounded into just his first double play of the season and flied out to Hurley in center. Done a nice job behind the plate as well. He's, his, his receiving has improved since last year or the year before when I last saw him play. French player is trying to help stabilize that Clemson pitching staff. In your many years guiding Furman, Ron, so underrated on any level of baseball is the performance of the catcher oh. relative to the performance of the pitcher. No doubt. Yeah. Swing and miss one and one. I mean, it's it's vital that the guy on the mound, in this case, Sacalaris, has faith in his catcher, the right. Leonard. And it, it just means everything in the world in terms of uh, the framing and confidence and, and the balls that, you know, balls that don't go to the screen. <laughs> um, Rip through the left side. Second hit in the game for French. This one will allow him to gently turn it first. On a two for four night. 
I can, I can tell you, we never had a good team when we didn't have a really good catcher. I mean, that's... And they, many catchers tend to go on and become head coaches or managers. And there's a reason for that because they're involved in every yeah, pitch yes, in the game. Yes. Ninth hit in the game for the Tigers, who've out hit the Hokies 9-8 in that category. But as you see, lead where it counts, 8-2. Bryce Teodosio, his first hit in the game, came in the sixth inning, a blast behind the bleachers in right center field for his third home run of the season and second this week, third all-time against the Hokies for the center fielder out of Malden. And that was an impressive swing, a 3-1 changeup that uh, he just stayed back and drove it to right center field. Teodosio now with six batted in on the year. Little number to short. Second one over to first. Fast man running. And Teodosio will be at first with two away here in the Tigers eighth. Six three on the put out as Donlin does a nice job to at least get the lead runner. Tigers up by six runs, probably not running, but Teodosio among their most successful three of four and stolen bases. Briar Hawkins, big hit early in this game for a Tiger third baseman who struggled at the plate. Bases loaded triple that, yeah, that made it a five one contest. The biggest, it was the biggest hit of the game to, to this point, and uh, obviously the the three home runs. In the middle innings, uh, it made you feel a little more comfortable. But uh, to come back and, and and put five on the board after giving up one and could have been a lot worse for Clemson. But uh, it, it, that had to be a little disheartening for for Virginia Tech in that in that first inning. You got the bases loaded, nobody out. Your the meat of your order coming up, and you only get one. It was Hawkins' first extra base hit of the season as he picked up his fifth hit of the year, and he drove home his first three runs of this 2021 campaign. 2-0 pitch. Side armor coming inside, getting the swing, 2-1. Started that ball over the middle third, and, and as I mentioned, it's going to break down and in on righties and, and tied up Teodosio with that pitch. And the count goes two and two. Hokies in their half of the ninth will have the top of the order up with Jones, Schobel, and Cross. And that group has provided the two runs on the night to this point for Virginia Tech as John Sheff trying to snap a six-game losing streak in the series, but things are trending toward a seventh straight Clemson win against their ACC foe from Blacksburg. Count goes full. Change up from Sacalaris. Payoff pitch to Hawkins on the move was Teodosio. He'll head to third as Hawkins has a second hit on the night. First and third, two away. In the eighth inning for Clemson. Well, the bottom part of the order for the Tigers tonight have really, really produced. Elijah Henderson, who hit that blast to left field his last time up stands in. You saw that you're going to be running on a three and two pitch anyway. Right. Teodosio. Probably with the ball hit to center or right was going to get to third. Maybe if it's a hard shot to left, he holds up. You can never have enough, obviously. Well, you've got to get 27 outs. I know that. <laughs> and sometimes those, those last three are, are, are tough to get. So uh, I, I know that Coach Chef was in the other position. He'd say, yeah, let's get a couple more here. <laughs> have done a nice job getting in the base runners that they've had on tonight. Stranding just two to this point. 
thought about it. Lays off, one and one the count. Home run on the year was the first for Henderson with that blast in the seventh, and he now is driven in three. Little slider that Henderson was able to hold up. Henderson, one of the many South Carolinians, one of the many from the upstate on this Tiger team. Madden will fire across for out number three. Tigers will head to the ninth, trying for a second ACC win of the year, up eight to two. Three p.m. game time on Saturday, one p.m. on Sunday as we head to the ninth inning in the series opener for the Tigers and the Hokies. Clemson trying to bounce back in ACC play, playing its third ACC series of the season. Swept in Chapel Hill last week after dropping two of three against Notre Dame back in early March. Hokies with a brutal conference schedule to start, but they took two out of three from Miami, two out of three from North Carolina, lost two of three against Florida State, and then here they are having to come to Doug Kingsmore Stadium for their fourth ACC series of the year. <laughs> That's, that's tough schedule. Carson Jones singled and scored in the first. One of the Hokies to strike out in the game, 11 and all. And it was his grounder back in the sixth inning that led to a force out at second base and close things out in that frame. So he's one for four on the night, but trying to get something going against Jeffrey Gilbert on for his second inning in relief. Anglin, the starter, went three for the Tigers and allowed just one run. Four good innings of work for Matt Clark out of the bullpen, allowed just one run and a couple of hits. And Gilbert, after walking the first batter he faced when coming on in the eighth, and got the next three and trying to close it out in a non-save situation. Well, Clemson's bullpen, again tonight, outstanding. It, you know, Matt Clark, just really, really solid. Looks like, looks like the Clemson Tigers are lined up and they're going to, like, like, like they're a choir. <laughs> You got the bases here on the left. The tenors up at top. We're like they're ready to take the team picture. Swing and a yeah. miss. Second strikeout for Gilbert. 12 in the game by Tigers pitching. And that's out number one in the ninth. Good pitch. You know, you got to have fun. And college kids are going to have fun. You got to let them have fun. You don't want to show up the other team, of course. But... Uh, Yeah, I'm not. Yeah. The uh, home plate umpire went over and alluded to something to Monty Lee. I don't know if it's something to do with the Clemson dugout, but well, the Clemson team trying to make it back-to-back -back wins on the week after, of course, they dropped six in a row with the last two losses in the series against Notre Dame and the non-conference loss to USC Upstate, followed by the sweep in Chapel Hill. But here they are. Trying to get a second ACC win. A nice job ranging to his left by Parker. Good little infield. floater behind second base. Yeah, good infield play today by the Tigers. Yeah, the one, the one error that I think that it will be made. That's a play that will be made later by Grice, but good range. Schobel yep. retired for a second straight time after he... Reached on two singles and a double. So the last hope for the Hokies, Gavin Cross. Their right fielder, but they're going to take him down for a pinch hitter. And instead, we will see Tanner Thomas. Tanner Thomas, one of the few guys on their roster who has senior next to his name. And that's why he's in there. That's just giving respect to a senior, you know, you say, you know, you're taking out your one of your best hitters cross and, and uh, you want to give a senior an at bat. Thomas kind of has that Inspector Clouseau mustache <laughs> working. Yeah. Just one for 12 in his career against Clemson pitching with a double and an RBI. And simply trying to reach base and provide what little hope remains for the Virginia Tech team that's about to fall to 500 in the ACC and 9-7 and seven overall. 
Tigers about to get to two and five in the league and back within a game of 500 at seven and eight. One strike away, Gilbert. And the count's one and two. There's a little bit outside. You know, you gotta, you gotta think the Clemson bench to the home plate umpire. It almost sounds like the bleacher uh, bums at right, Wrigley, uh, right. just kind of hearing them in the background. You see them all huddle together, and you know they're they're keeping it in fun. And as you said, you you, you want to have fun. That's going to be a foul ball. But that that previous pitch, you know, if you're in a minor league ballpark and and the score is eight to two and there's two outs and two strikes and there's a there's a close pitch, yeah. those umpires are going to ring you up. You better be swinging. It's time to go home or final game of a series, especially. Right. right. <laughs> Even yeah, if this were Sunday afternoon, then that strike zone might have gotten just a little bit bigger. But opening game of a three game weekend set. It'll be interesting to see who Clemson runs out there to start the game on the hill on Saturday with Davis Sharp unavailable. As Thomas steps out. Gilbert won't get the save, but it'll feel like one for this Tigers team. As he has been really good since coming on last inning. He won't be credited with a save, but he will. They really should have a stat of closing out a game. Tigers baseball will get this game done in plenty of time ahead of the NCAA basketball game tonight, but a little bit more baseball to be played as it's a pinch single for Thomas and a two-out base runner. Yeah, the Clemson bullpen, you know, given what, run, run, and uh, just been... It's been outstanding. Clark with, with the four big innings, and uh, he just really allowed Clemson to, even though they didn't score four runs or four innings themselves, you know, kept the lead for the Tigers. And then, uh, of course, you have the three home runs that, that put it away. Nine hits in the game now for the Hokies. Rumfield has two of them. And has driven home one of their two runs. The Tiger team with a staff VRA of 4.46 coming in to this point has allowed just a couple of runs. Ooh. Don't see Grum Rumfeld chase very often. That ball was up and out of the strike zone. Texas Tech has got to be ruining the day that he left them. Really good looking lefty batter. But in his second season as a Hokie after beginning his career out in Lubbock, Texas. Right side, Henderson goes the short way, and that'll do it. And the Clemson Tigers. A second straight home game, a second straight ball game to celebrate a victory. Win number seven on the year, and now two and five in ACC play as this series coming in, you could tell among the Clemson team was all about keeping their poise, trying to right the ship, and they're off on the right foot in a three-game set against Virginia Tech. Yeah, great job by the pitching staff and, and uh, some timely hitting and something that, that the Tigers have not had in previous games where they've struggled. Clark gets the win in relief. Tigers get the 8-2 to two victory, their seventh of the year and second in ACC play. The hitting was timely, the defense was good, the pitching certainly solid against a good and nationally ranked Hokies team. 3 p.m. for game two in the series, right back here on Saturday afternoon. Ball game that had three Tiger home runs, Teodosio, Henderson, and Parker, and Clemson celebrates a win. On behalf of Ron Smith and our fine crew, Pete Gannity saying so long, this has been a presentation of ESPN. <laughs>